views expressed on this program are those of the hosts, guests, and callers, and are not necessarily those of this station, its management, or other advertisers. You're listening to Transformation Talk Radio. Voices of Women is a top radio show that gives voice to the personal stories of women. It will inspire women and enlighten men to follow their dreams and create positive changes in their lives. Whether the audience listens to best-selling authors or a layperson like themselves, they'll realize there are others with similar experiences and feelings to their own. This show will give women tools they can use every day, which will empower them to step out of their boxes and create the changes they desire in their life. Chris inspires women to find their voices, speak up, and become leaders of their own life. Everyone has their gifts to share with the world, and it's time for women to work together to bring honor and respect to the feminine voice, which is within all people, men and women. Topics include personal growth, spirituality, creativity, leadership, and divine feminine. Now here's your host, Chris Stainus. Well, welcome to Voices of Women on this lovely Friday um, today we're going to talk about stepping into your power as a sacred woman. So I'm very excited about our guest, Dr. Christine Page. Um, she actually is going to be at our Woman of Wisdom Conference this uh, our 24th year, which is this February. So I'm glad to have her on the show today. She's the author of The Healing Power of the Sacred Woman, Health, Creativity, and Fertility for the Soul. And for over 35 years, Dr. Page has been a pioneer in the field of health care, especially for women. She's an international speaker and a wisdom keeper, sees herself as a bridge builder, whether between different healing modalities or states of consciousness. And during her medical career, Christine Page engaged in many fields of healing, specializing in pediatrics, ob- obstetrics, and gynecology. She founded one of the first integrative health centers in Britain and created a highly successful holistic practice in London. She's author of seven books, including Frontiers of Health and um, her latest book, the healing power of the sacred woman focusing on self-development self-care and personal empowerment and um, as i said she's going to be at the conference february 11th and 12th and there'll be a lot more information coming forward as we get our website and everything ready so we'll be talking more about that later you can visit our website at www.christinepage.com so welcome christine oh it's wonderful to be with you thanks for inviting me chris Yes. Well, first, I always start off with people's stories, you know, and, and stating you're a pioneer for women's health and women's empowerment. How did that come to be for you? What was your big aha that this is the work you are you are meant to do here in the world? Wouldn't it be lovely if we knew what we were meant to do? <laughs> it's, it's, it's only afterwards you think, wow, what opportunities I got for all of that. And when I look back, my I have a lineage of strong women. And women who were caretakers, and it it wasn't about going out to work. It was about being the leader in their communities. And my great-grandmother was what we call a social worker, but she would be called into every death and every birth because women were seen as those people who could help with death and birth. They really understood those cycles. And my grandmother was the person who... Everybody in the community, whether it was the judge or the vicar or the policeman, would come and sit at the kitchen table and ask her advice. So I've always had wise women in my family, including my mother, who did somewhat the same. And then I happened to be at an all-girls school, which is what we did in England, you know. So, But in this all-girls school, I only knew strong women. All these women had reached the peak of their own profession. Uh, they were strong teachers. And then I just happened (laughs) to find myself at a medical school called the Royal Free, which had been started because women in the early part of the 1900s weren't allowed into the men's medical schools. So this college had been started up in London. And by the time I got there, we were letting men in (laughs) and the men were letting the women in. But that meant that we were all 50-50 in most of the colleges by the 70s. It meant that I was amongst these really powerful consultants. And that many times in an operating theater, for instance, we would only have women. It would be the women anesthetists, the women surgeon, and myself, and nurses. So I only ever knew what it was like to have women respected. I have never, ever been abused as such, and, not, and men have always been 
gentle and also respectful of the women around them. So I, I come from a place of not being wounded, but a place of, wow, what if every woman knew what this felt like? Now, it doesn't mean that I have had a blameless life because I can make myself feel disrespected. But the fact of the matter is, I, I wasn't brought up feeling that men, or, that men and women weren't in some way equal. And I've always been around strong women. Well, that's great. And I, and I wonder, because you talk about um, you know, being in an operating room and all these women and, and women being respected in the medical field, do you, think that's, do you find that different here in the States? Because it's not <laughs> the do. impression I got. <laughs> I do, I do, and I, I, you know, I only have been in the country now for 15 years, but I couldn't believe it when I would go and meet my fellow women doctors um, and, and hear their stories. I couldn't believe it, because it was never what I was brought up with. And I, I have to say, the only time someone spoke down to me was an oral surgeon when I was having a problem with a tooth who kind of disrespected me, and I just went right back into my My mother would have been proud of me. It's like, don't talk to me like that. And all the nurses around went, because ah, nobody had ever said that. <laughs> uh -huh. and, and he came back and apologized. Uh -huh. And I said, don't ever talk to me like that. And I, and I will not be disrespected. You know, my husband knows that. and uh, It's just, it's not okay. <laughs> and I hear people you know, just in conversations where husband and wife and maybe a husband is calling his wife something, maybe the wife's calling the husband something, but the fact is, like, why would you do that? <laughs> and why would you stay around that? And I'm not, that's not judgmental. I'm just saying is I think it's very common and we think it's okay and it's definitely not okay. Yes, and it's all about women speaking up and letting, in, letting people know it's not okay. And we've been taught to not speak up. And, and the, most of the time, you know, we feel it down in our lower chakras. I mean, we, we lower body. So we don't even know. Sometimes we don't even know we've been attacked. And maybe for many women and men, but women particularly, they're so used to it, they don't even, they don't even feel it anymore. It's like a numbing effect has taken place. Mm -hmm. And so the very, so it's, you know, it, once you get there, you go, Good, why am I letting that person do that? But you have to feel it first. And when we numb ourselves to the feelings, and, and then, of course, we start to believe what this person's telling us, oh, you're no good, or you, you whatever, we stop fighting. And so often we need a friend, a good friend, to say, um, what are you doing? Why are you letting that person speak to you like that? And I think that it can be women to women. Um, sometimes I'm with a woman, maybe I'm traveling and I'm meeting someone who isn't looking at me, and she's kind of talking to the computer and I will stop and say, excuse me, would you look at me? Please respect me. And yeah, I find that. Oh, my, my husband goes, oh no, what's she doing now? <laughs> but I think women to women, we need to have respect for each other. Yeah, that's so true. And that is, you know, you're so much, where people are on, the, on their, their um, smartphones, they're on the computer and you're having a conversation and, and, and you can see when they tune out, and, they, and, and even when you ask them, they kind of go, oh, I'm listening. But, you know, they're not fully giving their attention when they're doing that. And it's really about being present and, you're, and, and, and acknowledging that that is disrespectful. And, and so it takes you to some of your work is talking about women, that, um, you know, in the ancient cultures, um, 3,500, 4,000 years ago where uh, women were revered. They were leaders. They were healers. Um, there was a there was a, a knowledge with women that you know they um, um, within that those ancient societies. So I'd Absolutely. love for you to share a little bit about that. Absolutely. Well, you know, in ancient cultures, first of all, women were revered for being the spiritual leaders, which of course, again, in our present day culture, almost got turned on its head, especially in in the Catholic Church, for instance, where women are not necessarily ever allowed to do that. But in it was understood that women have a much stronger connection to what we might say the spirit world or inspiration. And that's because when women go through their moon time, their period, or when they have an orgasm or when they're going through labor or in the menopause, women's um, consciousness is lit up to be much more receptive than men's is for, um, to be able to bring in inspiration. And that's women were naturally, that they have a natural tendency to be able to do that. Men have more of a need to, perhaps as a shaman, to take a, 
uh, mind-altering drug, ayahuasca or peyote, to be able to do the same thing. But women have it naturally within them. So that was one of the, the aspects. The second aspect was that women work best in community, and that's why when women don't respect each other, we've lost that strength that we have, which is of sharing. I would say you only have to go into a, a lady's restroom and everybody starts talking about, oh, I like your shoes, I like what you're doing. <laughs> women always want to talk. We always want to connect with everybody. And men, I'm sure, do not go into the restroom and all talk to each other. <laughs> My husband says they don't. But the mm. fact of the matter is women's power is to connect. So when we don't look at each other and we're really not sharing, we actually de uh, de disempower each other. And so that's why I'm saying respecting and, and sharing and being part of a women's group is so important. And the third part of that is that women were seen to be able to connect more fully with the creative energy of the earth, the dragon power. And it was that creative power which evolved, not only brought them the ability to give birth, but also the ability to let go of things. We'd say a transformative death. And so women were more in tune with the life and death cycles. And it was for women that the men turned to or the villagers turned to and said, what should we do next? And the women would say, this is where we need to put our creative energy and this isn't flying. And that's why in the Iroquois constitution, it was chosen, the women that were chosen were called the grandmothers because they knew what was worth fighting for. And if the women said, stop fighting, the men stopped fighting. I, the women knew what was worth going to war for. And yeah, so we're going to yeah, we're gonna talk a little more when we come back from our break about this, the dragon power and, and um, many, many other things. So we'll come right back and share more with Dr. Christine Page. Chris Stainis is a spiritual leader and healer and teaches a course on how you can transform your life through a meditation and healing system that will manifest your spirit's dreams. She manifested the Women of Wisdom Conference, the Women of Wisdom book, and this radio show. And she can show you how to change your life, too. Are you ready? Visit the website and contact her at VoicesOfWomenToday.com. That's VoicesOfWomenToday.com. We Carry the Light with host Dr. Susan Allison is the show that inspires you to find the light within and shine your light in the world. You'll hear from guests who model how to be the highest, brightest, most evolved, fulfilled, and conscious humans possible. Tune in each Thursday, 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern on TransformationTalkRadio.com and let Dr. Susan help you discover that you carry the unique light that only you can shine. On the cutting edge of the new mainstream, Christine Upchurch is passionate about bringing together science, psychology, and spirituality in a way that can be applied to our everyday lives for true transformation. The Christine Upchurch Show, stellar conversations to illuminate your journey, engages some of the most outstanding visionaries on the planet in lively dialogue to inspire you to become that bright light you're meant to be. Join Christine every Friday at 11 a.m. Pacific time on KKNW AM 1100. And Transformation Talk Radio. We're back on Voices of Women. I'm Chris Stanis, and I'm with Dr. Christine Page. Well, we were talking about the um, the um, um, patriarchal suppression, and you know, and what happened 35, 400, 4,000 years ago. And um, we were talking about the um, um, Christine. And I were talking about the collective amnesia amongst women. And and how sometimes we don't realize there's this collective consciousness that we've been kind of um, like we're in a daze, you know. We don't really know all this. We don't have the role models, and as we were saying. Yes, absolutely. And it's you know it took place probably 1500 BC and, and continued. I think up till you know by the time the Romans and the Greek or the Greeks and the Romans came in, it pretty well suppression happened, and it fascinating to go around the world and see how this happened. I mean, for instance, uh, a lot of the Greek mythologies uh, embodied some of the old ancient female goddesses, but they either became the god's wife or they got suppressed. And then after that, when the, the, the Catholic Church came in, they placed Mary wherever you would have found a, a loving mother in a Greek uh, tradition. So basically, they just transferred and transported 
new mythologies on top of the old. And so you start, to, you know, it's interesting if you tell a new story but just put a new figure on it, we will follow that, and, and that's what's happened. And so we're talking about at least 2,000 years ahead, and what I was saying is, it, therefore, we find it very hard to say, oh, yes, my mother understood what it was to be a sacred woman, or my grandmother, my great-grandmother. Yes, as you've heard me say, my, my, grand, my ancestors were wise women, but they also had struggled about being a woman and didn't necessarily understand why they had cycles and what it was to be a woman from that perspective. So I think that what we're doing is trying to find uh, history and wisdom from each other. I think it is buried. But this collective amnesia means that we can't just say, oh, do you have the answer? And that's why I wrote the book, because I believe the one thing that's never changed is the body. And the body has been the same for millions of years. And so I went as a doctor into the body and said, okay, what's the body telling me? about what it is to be a woman, and that's really why I wrote the book. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I know. There's a lot about the body in the book, and that's great. Well, you mentioned before <clears throat> about the dragon energy, and I want to get more into that, um, mm. and how, how we, beca we became disconnected from that power, but what is that? What is that power, that dragon energy? Well, the ancient people, again, have always called, knowing that there were energy lines that read, ran throughout the earth. And some people have called them dragon lines, some people have called them song lines. In, and in Australia, they call them song lines, uh, ley lines in Britain. And this is that there is an energy source within the earth. And the way I like to say it is, it's like saying that there's l l lava flowing throughout the earth. We know that the earth itself is made up of much more heat and flowing energy. So if you just imagine that this energy is flowing beneath our feet, and we see it when it comes to the surface in a volcano. But we also understand it runs in lines. And these so-called lines come together at certain places. And where they came together, the ancient people built their sacred sites. So Stonehenge is over such a site. And Mount Shasta is a meeting of energy. And many of the mountains that we have around us are, are often called dragon mountains. It's almost as if the energy gets attracted to places where it can curl inside a hill or curl inside a well. So this dragon energy is a creative force. And, and I, I like to kind of say it's, if you think of how, if we put a seed in the ground, we just imagine, oh, of course it's going to grow, but why does it grow? It grows because there's heat, there's moisture, there's nutrition. And that same energy is what I call dragon energy. So it's a creative source. And women knew how to tap into that creative source from beneath their feet and draw it up into their body, store it in their womb, and then use it as their power source. But when we had the patriarchal suppression, what happened is that the dragon got killed. I mean, there are many stories of George and the dragon or the, the dragon or the serpent getting suppressed. And what happened was that then the beginning of our so-called serpent power that many people know about, kundalini, that comes up through our spine. But kundalini, only we see it as only starting in our base chakra, in the lower part of our spine, where in fact, kundalini is part of this dragon energy and it starts beneath our feet. So that disconnect happened when we, start, we forgot that we needed to connect into Mother Earth. And we just try to connect and start our energy from the base chakra. I hope that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it was the very reason why, if, if people know about Kundalini falling asleep, that we have a sleeping serpent, it's often said, at the base of our spine. And the reason she's asleep is that she got cut off from her source. So in very simple terms, when we're meditating, it's very important for us to meditate down into the ground, into the into the ground under our feet to send roots into our into the earth and not only to send roots in but to be supported by mother earth and i find that that's when i'm working with people how dis ungrounded they are or disconnected they are to mother earth often feeling that they can't trust mother earth or she's never been there and often that symbolizes a relationship they had with their own mother so the starting point is can i actually put roots into the ground and feel safe to be here on the planet. Mm -hmm. And that adds that safety is that, you know, and a lot of meditations start by 
um, grounding, you know, setting your roots down to the earth and then bringing that, um, when I do it, is I bring that energy back up into my body and That's feel that strength and support and re re it's rejuvenation. And so we're, we're tapping into that, that, like as you say, the dragon, en <clears throat> excuse me, dragon energy, the, um, volcanic, you know, red lava kind of energy that's down there and uh, can be so helpful in our daily lives because we do go around very ungrounded, get thrown off balance very easy, you know, whether it's traffic or someone says a word that, you know, and we react to it, um, things like that. So one of the things you talk about is the the woman's power found in her womb. That's right. And, and we tend to, tend to think power is in our voices, you know, but we women are very wounded in our throats and actually... I think uh, one way to heal that is to go down into the womb to tap into that power as as and be, before we speak, even. Well, it, it is the place we should speak from. And as you say, it's not natural for women to speak from their throats. It's the, the masculine energy is from our throats. It's, it, when we speak from our throats, we're trying to speak from our minds, our brains, you could say, so that if I want to be an authority... I speak for my throat chakra and I just tell you what I want you to do and this is what you're going to do and this is how it is. But when I speak for my womb, I'm speaking from a place of community, relationship. And as I said, creating that relationship is so important for women. So it's a difference between do I want to just tell you what I'm going to do and I don't care what you think or do I want to actually make a relationship. And women's way is the relationship. The second part of the womb is, and this might be, uh, and women, men may, women may not know this, but when we get wounded or when we get hurt, we pass all that emotion down into our uterus, into our womb, in order to shed it every month with our period. Not uh, with us having a period, we then shed yeah, it in yeah. other ways, and I can describe yeah. that. Yeah. Well, but, that's fascinating, but we're going to have to take another break right now. Okay. We're gonna, we'll, we'll get back into that when we come back. Great. You got attitude, keys to the rescue. Adjust your attitude with Keys Clear Protein Waters. So refreshing, just a few sips of Keys will give you a whole new outlook thanks to 22 grams of the happiest protein on earth. Tongue tingling tasty without the guilt of naughty or nasty ingredients. If that doesn't put a smile on your face, maybe you need to drink too. Put a little in your attitude with Keys Protein Water. On Amazon or at Keys, K E E S, please.com. Chris Stainis is a spiritual leader and healer and teaches a course on how you can transform your life through a meditation and healing system that will manifest your spirit's dreams. She manifested the Women of Wisdom Conference, the Women of Wisdom book, and this radio show. And she can show you how to change your life too. Are you ready? Visit the website and contact her at VoicesOfWomenToday.com. That's VoicesOfWomenToday.com. The doctor is in. Tune in to the hit show, The Psychic Love Doctor, with host Deborah Lee. Deborah's life affirming, highly perceptive reading method has taught Deborah how to zero in on specific problems with relationships, career pursuits, and current roadblocks to success and happiness. Join Deborah Fridays at 2 p.m. Pacific and for a special broadcast the second Thursday of every month at 11 a.m. Pacific on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Call the Oprah of Radio by her listeners. Award-winning host Dr. Pat Basile is blowing the doors off of traditional talk radio. Get ready for an energizing delivery and powerful interviews with leaders in the field of human potential. Dr. Pat's fresh new perspective on living life full out has catapulted her show to the top of talk radio. Tune in and Dr. Pat will help you thrive instead of merely survive. Visit the drpatshow.com. That's T H E D R Pat Show.com for listening times in your area. We're back on Voices of Women. I'm Chris Stanis, and I'm with Dr. Christine Page. She's the author of The Healing Power of the Sacred Women. So, Christine, can you give your um, website um, where people can find out more about your work? And Absolutely. Uh, ChristinePage.com. My Christine is with a CH. <laughs> so I'm a Christine CH. And I'm also on Facebook. And so just to join me anywhere that you might like to come with me. 
Mm -hmm. Do you have a newsletter or anything or anything special on your website that um, people I've might want to look for? So I, I write on to the blog. So please, yes, check in on the okay. blog of what my latest writings are. But okay. do join up, sign up on our mailing list, and you'll make sure that you get those things. Okay, great. Well, um, you were just talking about um, that the the shedding of things as we, you know, have our bleeding time. And so I'd love for you to um, go a little more depth in that. Of it's not like it's not just a phys it's not just a physical thing. It's not just oh, here's my period again every month. You know, there's something exactly. more. There's something much more, and I, you know, I I very much honor um, the movement of the red tent and what's happening there. I would like to put more emphasis on the idea that what our, the womb is a transformative vessel. It's like something that can, be, that can change. So I would say if you think of the miracle of taking a few cells and creating a baby, that's a miracle. But the womb also does the opposite. It takes emotions that we've finished with and transforms it into blood so that we can shed it. And so every month we collect emotions from people and from ourselves. And every month on that first day, especially the first day of our period, we transform, we've transformed those emotions into blood and we can let go. And so it's a really powerful way of cleansing and releasing. And in, in many indigenous cultures, what would happen is that as you came towards your period, the, the family, especially the men in the family, would come to you and say, look, I've been going through this experience. I'm ready to let go of the emotion of it. Could you help me? And you would take on the emotion of your family, and then you would shed that in your blood. And so the men would be only too pleased for you to have your period because it was like, thank you, thank you, thank you for cleaning me and cleansing me. And that's why the, the image of don't, you know, women being so-called unclean at that time but it wasn't they were unclean. It was that they were so powerful in their transformation, you wouldn't want to go near a woman at that time. And at the same time, women should not cook food or make food in those three days because all she would do is put all those emotions back into the food that you then feed the family. <laughs> so no man would want to eat your food because he doesn't want to be given back what he's trying to get rid of. And so that's where the idea of women's moon time being so precious and a woman would, would see that as a time on the first day, especially of cleansing and clearing, the second time of day of nurturing, and the third day of being inspired. And when I'm now I'm postmenopausal, the same for me is the three days around the new moon. So the day before the new moon, I take a glass of water, I infuse it with everything that I'm ready to let go of, I pour it onto Mother Earth and ask her to take it, second day I nurture myself and the third day I'm, I'm inspired by new ideas that I write down. So women of all ages can do this. Well, great. I was, yeah, because I was going to ask you about menopausal. Yes. And in fact, we become more powerful in that time. And if women don't have this outlet, unfortunately, because we no longer bleed when we're postmenopausal, we then may get a cold or we may get diarrhea or we might get in something that we let go in another way. <laughs> So what I would suggest to any woman who's leading, listening who is postmenopausal, make sure that it's your monthly practice to let go and pour some water away. Um, and I often say for women who take on a lot of emotion, because women tend to, we take on emotion to try and help cleanse people all day. And when women do that, it's really important at the end of the day that they see themselves in a shower or go in a shower and let go of all this emotion. So I say it's like emptying your pot, imagining your womb like a pot. I say imagine emptying it upside down or taking it to an ocean and then clean it out and then make sure nobody's in there and put it back before you go to bed so <laughs> it's all clean again. <laughs> well, I love taking a bath every night before I go to bed and, and um, yes. just yes. being in water I think is also a way when I'm feeling, when I'm going through an emotional or a, a spiritual transition or an emotional one, being in water just brings me back to my body. Exactly. And water is the medicine of women, you know, so getting into water, washing together or washing, as you say, or having a bath. Water is so caring. I like going for my hot tub for that, you know. It's just mm -hmm. like, oh, yes, you know. It's that ability just to melt in because we, the ocean is seen as the great mother of unconditional love so that when we think of water or in it, we merge back into who we are as women because we are just one with the great mother. 
And it's like, oh, that was easier. <laughs> That's what mm-hmm. we forgot. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, the other thing, too, I want to talk about is um, what, it, what it would look like uh, for women every day, you know, every day in our lives to respect our bodies. Because there's a lot of disrespect, you know, about our bodies. There's a lot of images out there we're supposed to, you know, we think we're supposed to be skinny or like all the models or this and that. And, and there's so much disrespect to the feminine body. And how right. can we change that in ourselves? Well, you know, you can look at some of the images I've got in the books where, you know, we're meant to have huge hips, slightly smaller boobs and very small heads, you know. We're supposed to be heavier on the bottom. And, of course, that's not what's happening. We're becoming more like, or we're being asked to be more masculine, often without a waist. We're supposed to have curves. Mother Mother Earth is full of curves. And when we get rid of those curves, we're actually losing the flow. We're losing our connection to cycles. I could say to every woman, you know, your body is exactly the curves it needs to be. And I think for women to be able to, you know, feel sexy in their underwear, in their, to make themselves feel good about their body, to use moisturizing creams and make sure that every bar, part of your body is touched. But I feel that we're not going to change these messages until we start to love our bodies better. And I feel that you know, loving your body is about loving everything that happens with it, whether, like I say, it's your cycles, whether you do like food or whether you do want to be, um, you know, you, you, you want to dress your body up. I, I just feel that body image has been a way in which women have always felt they were shamed. And I, I would like more and more women to feel that they can um, dress in ways which make them feel sen- sensual and sensual. Because it's part of this is about the shame of sensuality. That's what I'm saying. But I think it's not only how you look, it's whether or not you look sexy. And I hear so many stories of women being told, don't look sexy, you know, you're bringing the worst things upon you or whatever. So I think we have a lot of guilt about our sexuality and our sensuality. Oh, yeah, guilt and shame and, and uh, yeah, so many issues that go on with that um, connected to our bodies. And so... Um, what what would you tell someone to to start off? Well, well, for instance, teaching our daughters to respect um, themselves. What would you tell mothers to do? Oh, I I would say respect yourself. I mean, I've women, girls are watching their mothers. They're watching the role models. You know, do you like yourself? Do you like your body? Are you always talking about dieting? Are you always talking about I shouldn't look? I I look fat in this. How do we keep talking to ourselves about food and about how we look? And I think for mothers and daughters, especially when the daughters are teenagers, you know, to go, or even before that, to be able to go and have your nails done together, go to a spa together, go and show your daughters what it means to feel good about having the body you've got. Um, you know, talk about where you're, what sort of clothes you want to wear. We all, you know, my body's changed dramatically since I was younger. And instead of trying to fight it, go with it. <laughs> And just honor that what it is, because we start to hide ourselves, feel we shouldn't be this shape or shouldn't be this size. I think also for women to understand that you know, for young girls, if I had a nine-year-old, ten-year-old coming in with her when she starts her period, to make sure that she has a celebration of that period and that we do give her gifts and she does get new clothes and get something for about now going into womanhood. But don't just make it a one-month event. Every month, celebrate her period. You know, my mother was always saying, oh, you've got the curse. And it was like, oh, no, you know, this is not a bad thing. <laughs> so what is it? How do we describe these things to our daughters? And when we were in ancient times, when a girl first had her periods, her, her family, her women family, would help her to understand the sensuality of her body. Not say, oh, now you've got a period. Now you're going to have to be careful. Boys don't want your sex or want to have sex with you. To recognize that a woman, woman's sensuality doesn't mean she necessarily wants sex. It's now she has a right to choose who she has sex with and to respect her body and to make sure that when she does have sex, the first important thing is that whoever she's having sex with, she is lit up by them, that she is magnetized. For a woman, when she gets lit up sexually, she's far more powerful than when she just doesn't feel that she's being respected or no, she doesn't really want sex at all. So for a man or anybody who's a partner to a woman, you want to be able to light that woman up, and therefore you have to respect her body, and she needs to tell you what she needs. 
And this and this message is so needed in the younger generation. Um, there's so much disrespect to the young girls, and and that expectation that you know you're going to be sexual as soon as you know when you're a teenager now, and and that you just you got to give give you got to give it out, you know, without that sense of true honoring of yourself and and being with somebody that that you really care about and love versus just doing it because everybody's doing it. Exactly. I think there's been a. You know, I'm very concerned about the high levels of rape in colleges, and I'm sure that's happening in other places. But, you know, we, we've got confused. Sex is one thing. It's, a, you know, in the base shark, it's like taking an, an alcoholic drink. It's a, you, know, you want to fix. But relationships are a very different thing. A relationship is sacral chakra. It's in the womb. So I think that we get very confused when someone says, oh, come and let's have sex together, because maybe I want relationship and they don't. I think mm-hmm. young girls is, and boys need to understand there's a difference between sex and relationship and just sex on its own. Yeah, so true. Well, this is Christina's Voices of Women, and we're going to take another short break and come back and talk more with Dr. Christine Page. Feeling broken from your relationships? Are you second guessing yourself about friends, family, and lovers? Tune into the hit show that's creating a buzz in the love seeking community Love Seeker Radio, finding love for your authentic self with renowned love coach Heather Lynn. Tired of dissatisfying relationships? Kiss them goodbye and power up your love seeker energy. Coach Heather Lynn reminds you that you can just be you, the beautiful and perfect you. Visit HeatherLynnCoaching.com to learn more. Chris Stainis is a spiritual leader and healer and teaches a course on how you can transform your life through a meditation and healing system that will manifest your spirit's dreams. She manifested the Women of Wisdom Conference, the Women of Wisdom book, and this radio show. And she can show you how to change your life, too. Are you ready? Visit the website and contact her at VoicesOfWomenToday.com. That's VoicesOfWomenToday.com. Artie Hoffman is the hottest psychic with the warmest heart and the host of the hit show Angels and Answers. A renowned psychic, medium, spiritual life coach, and an entertaining motivational speaker, Artie has helped over 15,000 people with his amazing intuitive gifts, his passion, and his humor. Call 877-ANGEL-02 to schedule a personal reading or to have your own psychic Artie party. That's 877-ANGEL-02. And visit ArtieHoffman.com and Angels and Answers on Facebook. My dream is to end homelessness. My passion is living a green life. My dream is to end poverty. My passion is volunteering. My passion is making a difference. My dream is to cure Lyme disease. My passion is rebuilding communities. My passion is helping those in need. My passion is caring for the elderly. My dream is to find a cure for cancer. My dream is to leave a better world for my children. We all have that special passion, that lifelong dream that drives us to live our lives with meaning and to create a better world. No matter what drives you, we can all make an impact. Dr. Pat Basile is helping others make their dreams come true so we can all help make our world a better world. To learn more about how Dr. Pat is building a community of sharing hope, strength, funds, knowledge, and information, visit abetterworldcrowdfunding.com today. That's abetterworldcrowdfunding.com. Holistic Medical Center is where you find it all. A healthy space with doctors who care, see, and listen to the whole you. Hi, this is Dr. Darvish. If you have not found an answer to your chronic symptoms, you will find answers here at Holistic Medical Center. Our doctors find the root cause of your symptoms and guide your body towards healing naturally. We transform lives from within. Visit drdarvish.com or call 425-451-0404. How would you like increased health and vitality? How would you like to avoid the onset of disease as well as slow the aging process? This is all possible through a simple, safe, and natural process. Every day we are either moving toward wellness or away from wellness. Hi, I'm Mary Jane Mack. I'd like to be your partner in achieving optimal health. Contact me now at MaryJaneMack.com or call 425-392-0659. Visit MaryJaneMack.com. Welcome back to Voices of Women. So I'm talking with Dr. Christine Page. Um, I want everybody to be sure check out her book, The Healing Power of the Sacred Woman. 
Um, so we we were just talking about um, you know young people and you know they're starting getting into their sexuality and and um, and the importance of for them to realize the difference between you know what's relationship and what's just sex and all that. So what is your what is your um, take on for um, bringing this in back to our con- your concept of the dragon power and um, no, and in a sense of knowing who you are, you know, at, when you're growing up, and, and actually it relates to all ages because we're still learning all this. But yes, and, and when we tap into that energy, so here we are. We've we present our roots into the ground. So I think the sense of feeling secure in the earth is really important. Having security, of course, we think that we're going to get that from our parents, and that hopefully does come. But that sense of being connected to something deeper than that is important. When a child is born in indigenous cultures, they would often plant a tree on top of the placenta, and it was a way of saying, you're planted here, this is where you belong. And I say all of that because when a child feels secure, they don't need to give their body away. They don't need to be able to to say, oh, I've got to do this in order to feel I belong. So that security is really important for our young people. And then to bring the energy up, as we discussed, is you can imagine it coming up like, golden golden fire or golden water and placing it in your womb and this is for all ages of women and then when you place it in your womb it's like being in it, it curls it's like imagining that curling in your womb so that when you speak you start to speak from your womb not from your head not even from your heart but from your womb and you might make much better decisions when you ask your womb what should I do in this situation because our head will tell us one thing and our heart will say, oh, I can't upset someone, but our womb will tell the truth. So I just one suggestion is you start to speak from that place. Another thing, I just as a little reminder, is instead of leaning forward into your heart, lean back into your heart. When you lean back into your heart, you're leaning back into what I like to say, the arms of your soul, into your true nature. So when you lean back and just imagine being held you make much better decisions from there. Do I really like this person? Would I want to go and do No, I don't. I don't like this person. You make much more intuitive decisions by leaning back. Finally, sometimes you need to surround yourself with a kind of warrior figure that will stick up for you. So that sometimes you have to ask yourself, you know, would, if I had a character next to me, who would that be who would say, is this the best thing I can do for myself? Does this give me pleasure? Does this nurture me? Sometimes it's hard for us to answer those questions. So sometimes it's just even having an imaginary friend <laughs> would help us to be able to make those better decisions. Sometimes a role model, what would so-and-so say in this situation, sometimes helps us. So it's using your imagination, but coming from the place of knowing that I'm loved, knowing that I'm as fine as I am, do I really want to do this thing? What is the best and most pleasurable thing I can do for myself? Well, that's just so great information. You know, there um, and um, things that people could do. You know, being aware. I love it. Our womb will tell the truth, and to you know, and lean back into your heart, like listening, truly listening to your heart. Like, what is it telling you? And um, and having an imaginary character to refer to, like, okay, what do you think? Instead of relying on your head, you know, because you might hear it's actually you speaking, but it comes from feels like it's coming from a wiser place, and 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 hopefully. Um, people will ne- people will listen to that. Now, sometimes they don't because you're rebellious and you know, like, no, I'm going to do it anyway and and all that. That's right. But one, that's right. But that's one of the right. things what you're talking about is having healthy boundaries, and that's something that we don't learn. A lot of us don't learn in our families or when we're growing up how to have right. healthy boundaries. So yeah, I'd exactly. love for you to and share. And it's not about defensiveness, you know. I think that when I say to a woman, "Is do you does this nurture you?" or do you, would you get pleasure? Would you enjoy this? They go, oh, no, of course I wouldn't. But So we say, well, why are you doing it? You know, I'm, my husband always says I, he never does anything he doesn't want to do. And I, I, as a woman, always do things I don't want to do because they need doing. And I think I'm not the only woman. You know, mm-hmm. so I'm just saying is we are not brought up. We're out brought up to serve and often to sacrifice ourselves and to think of others. And for women, it's really hard to put themselves at the top of the list and say, actually... I don't want to do this. And I think it's far easier for a man to do that. So I'm saying to women, you know, do you get pleasure? It's, it's an easier way of saying it. 
when I ask a woman what she gets pleasure from, she'll give me this huge description and you can see her light up. And then I say, well, what are you going to do? And it's not pleasurable. She disappears inside her cave again. So I'm saying use this dragon energy. It's a very creative energy. When you feel something that's pleasurable and you get lit up and you get excited, it's already happening. But when you're not excited or enjoying something, you're not using that dragon energy in a healthy way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a key, the healthy way. And and to recognize the dragon energy, to reach for it, embrace it, bring it into yourself, and then and then it's kind of probably I would imagine I'm imagining like and then experiencing, like testing it out. How Absolutely. does it how, how does it Absolutely. look for me to use a dragon energy? What do I do with dragon energy? Well, and I like to say the dragon energy is this. This is an energy that loves you so much it will not let you continue something that doesn't work for you. So I I do have a health warning on this. (laughs) If you choose to bring up this dragon energy, you've got to be ready for change. So that when you are not working in harmony with yourself, when you are not doing things that, that are good for you, the dragon will also burn away the things that aren't good. Now you might say, oh God, I don't want to bring that dragon up. But I'm saying it's a powerful source that will always bring you more love, more happiness and more creativity. Isn't that what we all want? Mm-hmm. It's and yet, the way we let go of some things that really were bugging us, but we were too scared to let go of, then we've just got to recognize that the dragon knows better than we do. Yeah. There is that fear for change, you know, because it's of that course. jumping into that unknown. But then of if course. you're trusting that dragon energy, it's oh. it, to know that, well, it's for your best interest. It's, it's, exactly. Um, and that's why I say lean back into your heart, because your heart is the part that really loves you, and will take you into the mystery, the place where you are fearful of going. But, you know, without mystery, we don't ever change our consciousness. Our mind will only ever go where we already know. But when we lean back in our heart and say, take me to the place where I can feel more satisfaction, whatever words you want to use, it will take you there. And the power to do that is the dragon energy. So your oh, heart I... knows where it wants to go, and the dragon takes you there. <laughs> oh, that's that's great. Well, we're going to end with that statement. That's wonderful. Thank you so much, um, um, Christine, for being on the show today. Lovely. It's been really yeah. lovely talking with you. Yeah, and um, so everybody check out her book, The Healing Power of the Sacred Woman, and her website is www.christine, with a C-H, Christine Page, P-A-G-E dot com. And also be looking out at Woman of Wisdom. She will be here in Seattle for our conference, February 11th and 12th, giving a keynote talk and a workshop. So we're very excited about that. We'll be going into lots of experiential um, ways of exploring this dragon energy. So we're very excited about that. Oh, Um, wonderful. I'm really looking forward to it. Yes, and um, also I want to um, be sure people know about our fall festival. It's October 24th. Go to our new website is www.thewowconference.org, and you can click on the fall festival for information and application forms to have a, a booth if you're an artist, a healer, a reader, a psychic reader, all those things, tarot reader. Um, we'd love to have you at our, our fall festival. It's October 24th. And also we have a call for our vendors for our conference now. That deadline's October 15th to have a booth in our goddess market, our marketplace. Um, and you can also find that at the same website, thewowconference.org. And please check out my book, Woman of Wisdom, Empowering the Dreams and Spirit of Women. It's a compilation of many stories from attendees, presenters, artists, Um, poets um, on the divine feminine and you can read about that at the on the woman was woman of wisdom.org website and of course it's always everything is available on amazon okay well this is the end of the show i hope everybody has a great weekend and um, we'll be back next friday at one o'clock seattle time You've been listening to Voices of Women with Chris Stanis. Tune in each Friday at 1 p.m. Pacific Time, 4 p.m. Eastern Time for Voices of Women Today. Radio with Chris Stanis.